Hey folks, if you have a WordPress website built with Divi, the Divi WordPress theme from Elegant Themes, and you're trying to do conversion tracking by using Google Tag Manager, you with me? I'm gonna show you how to do that. There are some really difficult things if you're using Divi with Google Tag Manager. Now real quick, I'm gonna show you specifically how to track a contact form. How to track a contact form by the form submission rather than doing a thank you page. Now, just so you know, in order to do excellent Google ads, Facebook conversions, Google conversions, analytic conversions, when somebody were to come to your website and let's say fill out a form, right? So here I've got a basic WordPress website and I go to contact. And what I would wanna do is if I was running a Google ad or a Facebook ad or a LinkedIn ad, I would want filling out this form to trigger a conversion. Now, traditionally, what a lot of people will do is they will use a redirect to a thank you page, but I've found multiple reasons why that doesn't work well, and it tends to get really clunky. I don't like that. What I do is I always use, and here at Feedbacker, and so we do web design, uh, we can help you with this, we do digital marketing, we create funnels, Google ads, remarketing, and everything. Um, what I've found is that tracking with a thank you page really doesn't um, give you the precision that's needed. So what I always do with our websites on Webflow, on other themes, is I use the form ID, or when that form submission is made, then boom, we have a, a what's called a trigger. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Tag Manager, I'll cover just some basics, but basically what Google Tag Manager is, is you put one JavaScript code in the head and in the body of your website. Um, so what I do is you set up Google Tag Manager. So here's, I've actually set up a Google Tag Manager already. And if I were to go to, um, I don't wanna do that. And when you're in here, if we were to go to admin, what you'll see is that there is a container setup, um, install Google Tag Manager, and there's a head and a footer. And if I were to come into my, and I'm gonna move really quick, so for those of you that already get this, I'm sorry, but when you come into your your Divi WordPress um, themed website, Divi by Elegant Themes, that, that WordPress has a little bit of a hiccup here. So I come into Divi and I go to the theme options here and what I can do is I'll go over to integrations and I will take, again, the way I got here was I went in and I went to the admin um, ah, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, oh, I have two of them. That's probably why this is happening. That's funny. Um, so when I come to admin, I'll grab the container. So install Google Tag Manager, or when you set it up, it'll actually pop up. You grab the head code and you're going to install that into the head. And then you will grab the body code, the body tag and put it in the body. And once you've done that, you're going to come in and you're just going to hit Save changes. All right, so that's normal. Now, usually what would be happening here in a, in a Google Tag Manager is that Google Tags has kind of two situations here, okay? There are if-then statements happening, okay? So basically, there's triggers and tags. The triggers are the if. So if you fill out my form, that's a trigger. Or if you clicked a link, that's a trigger. Then the tag is where we would say, Fire a Google Analytics tag. Fire a Google conversion in Google Ads. Fire a Facebook conversion. I'll show you how to do that, but that's the basics here. Well, in order to have a trigger, what has to happen is we have to have Google Tag Manager recognizing what's happening on your website. So usually, so when you're in Google Tag Manager, I'm gonna move quick now, you would go to preview here, and what it'll do is it'll actually open up this website in two different um, tabs, right? So over here, now I've got, this is tracking, I'm previewing what's going on in this whole website. So I can move around. In fact, if I click here, over here, I can see that I click the link and then the whole thing open. Okay. So link click, and then the new page is open. Here's the second page from bottom to top. These are the actions that are occurring. Okay. So now take a breath. Those of you that are new, for those of you that are already into this, um, Fast forward a little bit. So here's what's gonna happen. Usually on a normal website that's not Divi, when you do that, as you're clicking, if you were to come to a form and you filled it out, all of a sudden over here, there would be a form submit thing. It would say form submission. What you'll notice with Divi is that that does not occur. That doesn't happen. 
And when that form submits, there would be some variables in there, a form ID, a form element ID, a form class. That doesn't happen with Divi. Well, I have a solution for you, okay? And what will happen is the solution will make it so that when you fill out an actual Divi, now this is only a Divi form. You could go in and use Ninja forms, WP forms, whatever it is. But if you have this type of form, I'm going to show you a workaround that will help you out. So now in the in this video, in the description, is a little code, okay? And this code is a little JavaScript that we're going to put in the body of our website, okay? And you're going to have to edit this just a little bit. It's not hard. So it's this simple script right here. So you have script and script, okay? And what you'll see here is that it's a, a jQuery, it opens, and all of a sudden it starts looking for this form, and then we're going to give it an attribute ID, a form ID, and that's going to be, we're going to change this, where it says your form here, this is where you're going to change. So all I'm going to do real quick is, I, in fact, I already typed it in, you can't have any spaces, so make sure there are no spaces in this name. So just change between the parentheses with no spaces, and this is gonna be the form ID when the elegant themes jQuery fires. Once you've changed that without any spaces, we're gonna copy this, okay? And this is how you solve this. You can't see the form in Google Tag Manager with your elegant themes website. So what we're gonna do here, elegant themes Divi website, we're gonna hit dashboard, and we're going to come back down to that same place. So Divi and then theme options. And we're going to go over to the integration tab again. And we are going to paste this underneath where it says Google and Google Tag Manager on a clean line. We're going to paste this in the body, inside the body. And we're going to hit save. Okay, so once we save those changes, the next thing you have to do is you have to dump your cache. Whatever you're using to dump cache. I kind of hate that about WordPress caching is really obnoxious. It doesn't happen quickly. Once that happens, I'm going to show you something. So once you've done that, if you then come in and test it, so you'll have to dump the cache, reload your preview, and then what will happen is when you go to your contact form and you fill out the contact form as this is analyzing, um, it will recognize the form. So this solves this major problem of not seeing the form. So now we have a form submit. Now if I look at the form submit, now I've fired a tag, I've actually done some stuff around this, but when we look at the variables here, we can come down and we can see that when this click class happened, um, down towards the bottom, we're gonna have some, um, some, so you can see click text was the send message. You could do this by a click text if you got really stuck, but down here you're gonna see form ID is the form ID that I put in. So be kidding, now, I've done this video three times now. <laughs> There's my form ID. So now once I have that, what I can do is I can say when that form ID, let's make a new recipe in our Google Tag Manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to create a trigger that causes that to happen. Now, all of you advanced folks already know this, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to go into, we have to increase our recipe or our ingredients. So we the, right now, you have to go to variables and go to configure, and we're going to add in this form ID as a recipe piece. And as you scroll down, you hit this configure. Again, we have to add it in. Go variables, configure, and then come in and go down to, I always turn on the clicks, and I turn on the form. So all you do is you just click all this stuff. Oh, cancel. Click, 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 click. X out. And now you've added them. They are potential ingredients within your uh, Google Tag Manager. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a trigger, okay? And so we're going to take a trigger, and I still have that form ID. I had I copied it, right? I have that name. And now we're going to create a trigger. And we're going to go new trigger. I already did one here. Um, a new form trigger. So I'll show you what it looks like from the beginning. New. And I, I'm going to paste this up here. So form BKSE, that form ID equals this. And again, this is going to be the initia, initialization, go to form submission, the initialization of a recipe that we will make as a tag. So now we're saying when a form submission happens, all forms. Well, we don't want it, this to occur when all forms happen. We just want some forms. And then we're going to go here and we're going to go 
when the form ID, so some forms gives us drop down, when the form ID equals that form ID, now we have a trigger, okay? So we have that trigger. Now I'm going to quick delete that because I've already made this twice, okay? Now, once we have that trigger, we can do some cool things. So here are some of the tags that we can make, okay? So you can come in and you can say, let's fire an event in Google Analytics when that happens so that you can track it, okay? You could also come in and create a Google ad conversion. And maybe that's what I'll do right now. Um, let's just go into Google ads. Um, and as you set up a new account, in fact, I'm setting up an account for this. I'm going to be the admin. Um, and as this happens, save and continue. There's two pieces to this I want to add for you. Um, so this next video is going to be how to use this trigger in a Google ad. Okay. Um, hopefully this is helpful. If you have a Divi themed WordPress website and you're trying to track your form submissions using Google Tag Manager, that's how you do it with a form ID. How do you fix the form ID tracking system um, on Elegant Themes? Good luck. God bless. Hopefully that was helpful because it was a pain for me to figure out.